But it's this very neglect, she says, of the law and human rights in Russia's northern Caucasus that has made it possible to let the violence from one region spread all over the country and let authorities believe that who is stronger is right. So I'm proud to present the award-winning documentary for the 2024 Women's Voices Now Film Festival's Best Creative Documentary, When I Escaped by Zlata Onufriva. We'd also like, if I may, just before you run the um, uh, extract, we wanted to give an honourable mention to the film called Another Body, which is a very creative film fighting fire with fire by using a similar technology from which the harassment issue the film deals with stems. Thanks, Chelsea. And thank you and well done to the filmmakers. Ей позвонила Мария в слезах, сказала, что в доме собирается очень много мужчин, родственников ее мужа, и она боится, что ее начнут убивать. Из-за что звонить телефон уже был недоступен. Они нас живыми все равно не найдут. Если идут сплетни, а девушки у семьи есть два выбора. Они могут закрыть рот обидчикам, и они могут избавиться от девушки. Короче, стоит отец и двое мужчин, каких-то незнакомых. Они говорят, что вот к нам поступил вызов о том, что тут кого-то удерживает. Типа меня спрашивают, вас удерживают? Отец тебя отвечает, нет, не удерживает. Типа наши начинают нет удержать. Мы не отходим от дома дальше, чем на 200 метров. Я сама заказала такси в Чечне в Грозном ночью, пока все спали. И потом уже на утро меня искала сестинская полиция, и родственники меня выследили по камерам. И есть ощущение, что они просто бегут каким-то толком, если я только знаю, что если мы занимаемся только там ДБТ, и сейчас мы вынуждены заниматься девушками, которые к сообществу отношения не имеют. Конец у Тони Я здесь 10 месяцев. Все это время мне понравилось. Очень много разных знакомых из разных стран. А никогда никто не знает даже моего встречения. Ты один, можно сказать, то второй русскоговорящий человек, которого друзьят. Просто я не люблю вообще как вспоминать человек. Все это. Смотри, мы это хоть как-то южный контакт. Но они такие, что я могу сделать? Я ничего не изменю. Все так живут. Моя мама так была, я так думаю. И вы так будете жить. Мы ушли, мы никого не убивали, не грабили, ничего такого не совершали ни с кем. Мы просто ушли. Просто мы в первую жизнь выбрали себя. Да. Yes, thank you so much for this opportunity. Like I honestly didn't expect it at all. Um, uh, our film hasn't won anything yet, and I haven't won any awards yet in my life, so I feel um, uh, very honored. And I feel like uh, a lot of what um, Adeya said today. Uh, she just like said exactly what I'm thinking. Um, because the, this woman I'm talking about, like one of the thing that um, shocked, not shocked me, but like was the most biggest, uh, the biggest uh, reward I got after making this film was uh, looking into um, comments we had on YouTube. Of course, there are a lot of comments from men from North Caucasus saying something like, that's a lie. You're always putting a shame on our region. It's bullshit. And the same men after saying, these girls are disgusting horse. We need to kill them. And uh, this, you know, feeling that this man and the same message tell that stop telling lies, but also we need to kill them. That's like absolutely frustrating. And this man are the men who have voice. And this man are the men who have power in this country. And this man are the only men who are being listened to. Um, while these women, uh, women in North Caucasus, in Chechnya, in Dagestan, and in Gushetia, in that areas, which are very remote, which have like, some people don't even know it's a part of Russia. Some people don't even know it's like, it exists. Um, they're not seen, no one knows they are there. They, no one knows what they're going through. And one of the problem a lot of activists faced when helping them to get out of the country was, for example, in Europe, they a lot of them couldn't get refugee status uh, because 
um, European governments would be like, why don't you just move to Moscow, St. Petersburg, without understanding how corrupt the country is and how far this family are willing to go, uh, how much they can pay to the police in Moscow, in St. Petersburg, to bring them back, to torture them, to medicate them, to make them like a vegetable state. So they will like have to accept that the way of living their family is forcing on them is the only way of for them to survive so they have to accept it right and um while working on this film i felt very frustrated often first because obviously i am very privileged uh, russian woman being slav being white being from non-religious family um, telling the stories of women who have zero voice. I felt like, what if I say it wrongly? What if, if I do something to hurt these women? So I talked to my friends from Chechnya, female friends, who are also very brave, who are also journalists, but who are still hiding from their brothers, their Instagram stories. So their brothers will never know they have male colleagues, never know that they ride a bike because it's like, if they find it out, they will be forbidden from like working out of the region or, or worse. And I, I called one of my friends and I asked her, look, um, I'm losing energy. Like it's very difficult to hear their stories. And it's difficult because I'm always scared that I put them at risk telling their stories, even so they insist to be there. They, even so they insist not to be anonymous. Um, I'm scared. And she told me, look, you can't decide for them, but also, it does make change. I know you feel like you can't change Chechnya. I know you feel that you can't change Russia. I know you change that's bigger than you, but the more you talk about it, the more people know about it. And it's important uh, because one drop <laughs> can make a difference if everyone talks about it, if more people talk about it. And I think as a day I was telling how I felt that I was born very privileged. I was born very lucky to have what I had, access to education, access to a lot of things. And when I traveled to Chechnya at 21 years old for the first time for a completely different story, I met one uh, Chechen girl who became my fixer there. And I got really close to her. She was amazing. She was really smart. She really wanted to work for NGO and uh, invest in some human rights. And she was studying in Moscow as I back then. But one day, her father decided she's coming back to Grozny. And he told her, look, you're not going to finish your education because there is no man to stay with you and you can't stay in this city by yourself.